So, Jean, I was thinking that you and I, we could get engaged and go wedding cake tasting. Yes. Just for the experience. (laughs) Just to eat. Especially me right now. This would be amazing. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Jeannie is, how many months pregnant are you? Five. Five months pregnant. And she literally looks like a pencil with a little (laughs) sesame seed attached to it. (laughs) So um, anyway, uh, today we are going to be talking about wedding cakes. And it's like... I love wedding cake. I think it's the favorite part of any wedding. Um, you want to see it. You want to like, it, it's like it, they show it to you the second you walk into the room and then you can only think about the moment that you get to actually try it. So it's one of those things where it's uh, the way it looks on the outside and the way it is on the inside is like the full package. Uh, so yeah, let's go wedding take cake tasting together. <laughs> <laughs> Did you save yours really quick question? Did you save it? Uh, did you freeze it? Embarrassingly, I never even had a bite of it. No. Not a bite. Uh, no, we we tried it when we ordered it. And uh, the night of the wedding, we... Well, you were having so much fun. We had so much fun. We left and nobody said, hey, do you want to take your cake home? And then we felt like really uh, cheap individuals to go back the next day and say, hey, do you guys have our wedding cakes? Oh we, just let it, we just let it go. Oh, my God. I <laughs> We had I, nothing. Yeah. I ate the whole thing. And we froze it. And then a year later, we had champagne. And then we each had a piece again. And it was still good. So So, romantic. It was still good. Yes, it was. Love it. It was. (laughs) Uh, Welcome to our podcast. So you're engaged. Now what? Today, we'll be talking about wedding cakes with our special guest, Lara. From Peace Lara. by Lara. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Lara. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank you for joining. Yes. Uh, we're very excited, actually, to have you to have you on, so am I. <laughs> on the show. Um, so, like, let's get right into this. How did you get into wedding cakes? Like, why wedding cakes? Why you? How did this happen? So I started baking when I was really young. Um, just always loved being in the kitchen. It was kind of like my go-to space, you know, tried to get creative. Um, So then in 2012, I actually graduated from the International Culinary Center in New York City. And from since then, I've been baking professionally. And actually, the first wedding cake I even did was basically a month after I graduated. um, Somebody saw me and, and, you know, they saw my cake that I, a few cakes that I had made and they booked me right up. It was a small wedding to start, but since then I've been doing not just weddings, but a lot of different parties. Um, but wedding, you know, especially in this area, there's so many weddings going on all the time. So that's a, you know, a big part of what I do now. I'm just yeah. curious. That, well, that you actually answered one of mine. I was going to say, do you do anything else? Um, because like little cookies for baptisms and, you know, it, it, cupcakes are so popular now. Yes. Um, but in, then you said now it's primarily, you know, wedding cakes for you. How many do you do in a year? Um, I mean, every year varies, especially obviously this year, definitely threw a wrench in like kind of the statistics yeah, because there's totally. so many weddings that got canceled and everything or at least postponed. Uh, so it's kind of hard to keep track at this point yeah. because um, between like, especially like, you know, sometimes there's smaller weddings, larger weddings. So even certain smaller wedding cakes I've made have been smaller, have been, uh, you know, smaller than like some sweet 16 cakes I've even made. So the, you know, the cake size doesn't necessarily, you know, it, it's not just for, I guess, wedding cakes. It's mm-hmm. like all celebrations in general. So okay. a year, like I said, it's kind of hard to keep track. Um, I don't necessarily have the stats for that, mm-hmm. but every year is something different. And some mm-hmm. years it's more weddings, some years it's more uh, baby showers, you know, yeah. it's kind of both. Well, it <laughs> depends. They yeah. kind of go but, hand in hand sometimes. Yeah. What's more important to you, taste or aesthetics? Um, you know, I would say 50, 50, I hate going to a party and looking at this gorgeous cake and then eating it. And I'm like, Ooh, not worth it. It It's not good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, nothing drives me more like mad than that. So to me, the taste is like super important because that's what you're going to remember. Like that flavor is what you're going home being like, Ooh, that cake was awesome. So that I, I guess if I had to choose, it would be flavor. Yeah. And do you think that's the same for your clients? 
My clients, yes. Um, I mean, I've met with a lot of people, some obviously book, some don't, you know, people meet with a lot of different vendors. So I would say my clients most definitely are that way because a lot of times, like how my business have even, has even excelled is through that. So they'll go to a party, they'll taste a the cake and they'll be like, Ooh, who made the cake? Ooh, and did? then they'll reach out to me usually. Uh, so that's a lot of the times how I, you know, how I even get my clients. So it's usually through taste, I would say definitely. Do you What's have, your fa- <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like a little, like, <laughs> like the, the child that just can't, she's like, I have to like, I haven't had, I haven't <laughs> had cake in so long. Like, <laughs> so I have we a both, lot of questions for you. Let's talk. Both, I want to know flavors and ingredients. I want to know everything. I'll, I'll have, have to ship some over to you guys next week. <laughs> We've also been quarantined. We're just so happy to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? All right. But my question was, um, do, are you known for a specific type of cake in terms of flavor? Um, yes and no. I would say my most popular, it's not like a signature thing, but I do have this, um, it's like a whiskey infused cake that is mm. very, very popular. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times, like that's what people will, you know, be like, oh, I had this cake. I don't know what flavor it was, but that's what I want. And so it it tends to kind of go back. It's not like a boozy cake, like rum cake would be. It's just kind of got this zing and people are like, what is that? It tastes really good. Yeah. And it's whiskey usually. So that's, <laughs> I would say that's the majority, like that's the main cake. Usually they'll be like, I don't know what it was, but I liked it. Yeah. I want that. So, Yum. Okay. And is that like in a, like a vanilla base or a yeah vanilla base? base. So with like the vanilla mm. bean and like kind of like a cinnamon whiskey blend, uh, it turns out really, really good. And like I said, you don't taste like the booze. You just taste like some like nice flavor. It gives another, a depth to it. Mm-hmm. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds amazing. Where are you, oh where are you based? Um, so basically, I mean, Northern New Jersey. So I, all my clients, I would say between New York city and, uh, New Jersey, but all tri-state area for the most part. Um, you know, I'll deliver to as well. Um, but that's usually like the areas that I reach out. I started off in, you know, a small town in Emerson and now, um, um, in Bogota. So, so now I'm even closer to the city. So I have a lot more clients in the city too. That's great. Mm-hmm. Like what, what's the process when somebody uh, is head, you know, now it's time for the cake. They call so, you and like t- walk us through what happens. So, um, each time it's different. Like I said, like I've actually never really had any sort of like advertisement. I actually just started, um, I just became part of the knot and wedding wire, but that's fairly recent, just like a month or two ago, really. But even prior to that, all my business has always been, like I said, through word of mouth or, you know, at a party and they'll see the cake and they reach out. So a lot of times the, um, you know, the party host will be like, Hey, my friend liked this cake. Can I give them your number? I'm like, yeah, sure. So it'll be a very one-on-one connection and very like personal communication. They won't like have to meet with a secretary or anything. They'll usually meet directly with me. Sometimes they, you know, they email me, sometimes they text me, call whatever the case is easier for them. Um, And then once we kind of discuss what they want, I ask them for visuals and, you know, we'll talk about flavors and go from there. Certain people, if they want to do a tasting, then we'll set up a tasting. Most customers, like I said, if they've already had my cake, especially if it's a bride, they're so busy. They're like, I trust you. I like it. Mm -hmm. I've had your cake already. Don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. And so, you know, I'll go with what they want. So, um, and yeah, we'll go from there. If we want to meet to discuss in person, we can meet. If not, a lot of times we'll just discuss via, you know, telephone and, and then the, you know, the date is there and the delivery is there before they get to the party. I, you know what it is? It's like, you work with so many vendors. I, to me, the most important is like, you don't have to worry. You know, it's like you made the order that the rest is there. You're going to get to the party and the cake is there. And that's all that matters. So try to make it as stress-free as possible for them. That's part. Do you think that you have more couples that that um, sort of interact with you that way, where it's they send? Do people ever email you a photo or, or text you an image, and they're like, Definitely. "This is what I want. I don't need to taste it." So is that kind of like more your, your you know your speed at this point with with clients, or would you say it's like fifty fifty where you have tastings with the other half? Uh no, I would say majority is actually that way. Um, okay. I like I said, I do have clients that choose tastings, especially if it's a new client. But for mm-hmm. the most part, um, they know me either through somebody or they've had a cake, so they're like, oh no, I don't need a tasting. I'm good. Especially if you know, like you've done the wedding process before. It's mm-hmm. so hectic. And especially if you're on a diet, you don't want to gain the weight. You yeah. don't want to have a whole tray of cake. Yeah. I remember 
when I went for my cake tasting, I was going to throw up. I was like, oh my God, it's too much cake. I know. I was going yeah. to, I, I was going to ask you what is, cause I didn't do that. I mean, I just, I kind of did what a lot of you, you're saying your clients did. Yeah. I, had, I had an image. I sent a, a picture. I, I kind of knew exactly what I wanted flavor wise. Mm-hmm. I was, I was easy. Um, but if there's a client that has no idea what they want, mm-hmm. um, at all, even flavor wise, you know, um, like Natasha was saying, aesthetics, like, and they want to come in. How does that work? What would that look like for you? So usually, um, like I've seen tastings of people doing like literally maybe like 50 flavors. And to me, that's so overwhelming. And by the time you get to the last one, you're almost nauseous. Like, so the, you're like, like oh, I don't want to the palate, you mean? Yeah. Like yeah. how, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So then you get confused. Like if you even like the first one, you know, so to me, <laughs> I like to narrow it down. I'm like, all right, let's see, like, you know, between three to six flavors or whatever. I mean, again, if the client wants all 50, I'll give them all 50, but yeah. usually they're like, simple and they're like no these are my options I'm just not sure exactly which one I want to go with so I'll say okay so let's focus on these three and then and with aesthetics a lot of times especially if it's for a wedding I'll ask them okay send me a little bit of your decor send me some flower images okay and because there are many clients that are like I have no idea what I want and it's hard kind of for a vendor to be like well how do I how do I know what you want you know yeah so if they send me at least what design they're going for then I'll kind of create like a look board for them and then be like here are some ideas what do you think and then a lot of times like most of my clients like what I like to do is I never like to like say this is an image of your cake I like each cake to be special so a lot of times we'll be like oh we'll take a little bit of this we'll take a little bit of this so it's not just like photocopying like this picture somebody else's cake it's your own cake and it's more special that way and when you when you prepare for these tastings I mean Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I would imagine you might say to them are you know or do you prefer these types of flavors more? Is that how you kind of do the process of elimination? Yeah. And to narrow it down. And and do you have a tra- – do you set it up really pretty? Or is I'm, – I'm, I'm picturing like is it a big piece of cake each? Or is it so like I little actually, minis? Like- <laughs> the, the few times that we did it actually, the last few times, I actually did them in like cupcake form. So they were okay. cute. And mm-hmm. they got the flavor. Um, You know, I use the same – you know, cake batter recipe that I would, but at least mm-hmm. it's like cute little cupcakes. Yeah. They can either, you know, cut it and then like have half the husband, half the wife, whatever, you know, bride and groom this, that. So that's kind of how I like it. I think it's a little cuter than just pieces of cake. So mm-hmm. I just, you know, to me aesthetically, I'm like, I just don't want to like pieces of like raw cake. <laughs> I want something cute. So or I, a ma- or I a need- massive slice. Eat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like so to do it that way. I can't get past like the taste. Uh, just let's revisit the tasting sure. thing again really quick. So if somebody's coming to taste a bunch of flavors, that's a lot of it work. It is. How do it you is prepare? Yes. Right? Yeah. Especially when, um, especially like for a business like me, which is like a custom house, like I'm not in a big bakery that is whipping out 10 cakes a day, um, like just to sell in the storefront. So to me, you know, at each tasting, I'm creating that time and creating those cakes for them kind of thing. Um, and I, you know, I, it is kind of, con- it is considered in like the cake price. I'm not making money off the tasting, obviously. So it is a significant amount of work and cake yeah. and stuff. But, um, like I said, it, I haven't had too many issues with my clients with that. Um, but again, I mean, listen, when I want, when I got married, I obviously didn't make my own cake. Um, I, I wanted to go taste cake tasting too. So I understand when brides want that. Um, so I'll never want to take that away and be like, well, it's a lot of work. No, you know, yeah, obviously sure. you give it to them. And, and that's kind of why I like to narrow it down though, because I mean, I know I was so sick the day after, <laughs> after my tasting. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to bombard somebody with a million flavors. So, you know, I'll give them options and they'll be like, no, I don't want that. Yes, I like that. And so then we'll narrow it down. Yeah, that's a smart idea. Yeah. Love that. So qu- how do you transport it? I've always wondered. So oh, it, how do you um, get it there? Yeah. It depends, obviously. Like certain cakes, um, you know, if it's if I can fit it in a box, I fit it in a box. Um, but a lot of times when you have these big, large three-tier cakes, there's no box that that's going to fit in. Um, so I actually have this thing called a cake safe, which it like puts a metal rod in the middle of the cake and it really holds the cake while you're driving. Oh, wow. um, it's a newer thing that we, I just got. So um, I've only used it like the last, like maybe like a couple months. But before that, 
It was holding it in a car and delivering it and, and just being like, all right, say a prayer. Like, hope for the best. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's so much pressure put on it. It is easily the most stressful part of baking a cake. I would imagine. I mean, because how long does it take? Well, it's. I guess it's hard to answer that question. It depends on the cake, right? But I I mean, let's just say a tip. Let's say a a a a beautiful two tier cake, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I mean, it depends on how you divide it, right? So if I'm like doing other jobs in the middle, um, but it's a solid couple hours. I mean, half a day, one day sometimes, and. You know, if it's a big cake, it takes like several days to like really focus on and um, and to if, you know, God forbid anything were to happen in one second, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. And I, yeah. And now do you because um, I don't I don't know anything about this. I really I have. I, I mean, I, I baking. I please Toll House and I throw them in the oven. Like, I, <laughs> give me a break. But I mean, I <laughs> I do want to know something. So let's say the wedding is the next. You have to have the cake ready for the reception, obviously. Like you yes. bring it. OK. Um, how, when do you want to finish the cake? Like how many hours of lag time in between will you, is good to have, I guess. Where so I always like to have it done the day before. Um, yeah. That way it sits in the fridge, obviously. Mm-hmm. I also am not one of those. um those bakeries, you know, there's plenty of bakeries that bake a cake a week before and throw it in the freezer. No, I, I can't. I'm like, no, you taste it when you eat it. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. so I will try to do it as soon as the date as possible, but you got to give yourself a little time just in case. Right. So I always make sure that I have like half a day, if anything goes wrong to kind of take care of that. Um, obviously if the cake nowadays, it's very popular to have like fresh flowers on a cake. So, um, I'll prepare the cake. And then I'll put the fresh flowers on last minute right before I deliver it. So mm-hmm. I'll have all of the, you know, the flowers ready, but, um, cause you don't want that like a day before, you know, sitting in buttercream, not, you know, not in water. So, yeah. um, so stuff like that depends certain things. I have to just do the final touches when I get there. Um, but for the most part, I'll have it always done the day before. That way it gives me a little bit of time in case, you know, something goes wrong. I need, I have the time to finish it the morning of, um, or just it. Luckily I haven't needed any of that, but yeah, well, I always nice. like to give myself that room. <laughs> I, I always so, struggle with a so, like size, like amount of like, I mean, even in my personal life, like I'm a terrible hostess, like, like Carvel, I'm like, how many, you know, I'm thinking of my son. <laughs> I'm like, how big should this be? And, and I, I, I always, um, cause I know I don't eat that much. So I'm just like, how much do I, you know? Yeah. It's the worst. So I guess my question is, um, I don't know, 200 guests, right? Uh-huh. Like I, do you ask them their, the guest size and then you yes. suggest the size of the cake. Okay. Yes. So okay. I always, you know, uh, size of party is a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. also for the weddings, kind of like what you guys mentioned when we first started the first tier saving it, that has a lot to do with it too. So, I mean, I'm working on a wedding cake for oh. next, um, next week. And it's, you know, obviously due to the situation, it's very small. It's just for intimate family. They postponed the real wedding for next year. We'll take care of, but, um, you know, they want to keep the top tier. So that means I have to, you know, get all the guests on the the bottom tier. So if they're going to keep the top tier, um, I always ask beforehand because that makes a big difference in my calculations. So if it's like for a hundred people, um, and they want to keep the top tier, then I'm working on like a four tier cake because the three tiers are going to feed the hundred people. And then the one, the top is going to, you know, be for them in the freezer for next year, basically. I love that. Mm-hmm. Do you do fondant? How do you say it? Fondant? Fondant. fondant. Yeah. Well, fondant. it depends if you're doing a little French. Yeah. Fondant. But fondant. that's how I, fondant. I, I, and it sounds funny with me from, I'm like fondant. Like, yeah. <laughs> fondant. So it's fondant. Yes. Like, fondant. Like your yeah. Lara. It's fondant. fondant. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so do you do both? And that's yes, an option? I do. Um, I do. It depends on the clients. I've seen um, earlier when I first started, fondant was more popular. Now I think a lot of people are liking the more like natural look. So they like the whole buttercream. Tastes better, right? Buttercream tastes better. Well, I, I always looks- put buttercream inside anyway um, and then mm. put the fondant on it. So those people that don't like the fondant can just peel it off and eat it um, because, you know, just kind of like a marshmallow coating. So there, you know, I, I think depending on the look you're going for, it has a place for sure. You need like certain times, you know, customers will send me a photo and they're like, but I want it with buttercream. And I'm like, but this is all fondant in the picture. It kind of needs to be with fondant if you want like this pillowed look kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so we'll, I'll work with the customers, but yes, I do both. I love fondant. I eat it. 
I just eat that and I don't even eat the cake yeah, me. sometimes. I it's love so it. funny. It's like one of those like love or hate things. Some yes, people I see love that. it. Yeah. My, husband, my husband hates it. He feels like it's too sweet. My sister loves it. So anytime yeah. like she has like a plate of fondant and I'm like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm actually not even, I don't have a sweet tooth. So mm-hmm. it's funny. I'll, oh I'll God, bake all day, yeah. but I don't actually, I mean, obviously I'll taste That's it. good. That's a blessing. Sure, but yeah, <laughs> if, I, if I did, it'd be a problem. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever fill, like, do you use fillings or is it yeah. pretty much like cake and... Uh, it de- you know. I mean, th- there's definitely a filling in between the cake or else it'd be way too dry. Sometimes it's just buttercream. Sometimes it's like a flavored buttercream. Sometimes it's lemon curd. Um, r- I'm doing, I'm working on a cake now with like, uh, it's going to be like a raspberry filling. Sometimes people just want fresh fruit with like whipped cream. Mm. Uh, yeah. So mm. I'm again, <laughs> anything is possible. So is there like a me- cuz I've I've been to the knot and I've seen your work and it's very pretty. What I like about it is it looks delicious too. Sometimes Thank cakes you. look artificial. They yes. look beautiful and Thank stunning. You. Point. Yeah. But they don't look delicious. Your cakes <laughs> like truly look delicious. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Um so so is this how we would find you is by going to is that the best way? I'm sure you have social media. So like I said, I actually only joined the Knot and Wedding Wire um, just very recently. Like when this whole thing, when the you know quarantine kind of started, they reached out and they wanted to get me on their site. And um, But prior to that, all my business was on Instagram and Facebook. And um, But most people would contact me through either text or email through my, you know, the the business email that I have. But yeah, okay. that's usually how they'd contact me. A lot of times it'd be Instagram, you know, messaging and stuff. And we're going to ask you to, to list those in just a few. We, we have more questions. Sure. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I just, I have a question I just thought of. Um, in Like, uh, do you offer, are you, how do I say this? Uh, do you offer different types of cakes? For example, vegan, if a person's like, you know, uh, or all organic. I would, yes. I, that, that would be my question. Organic. Organic. <laughs> organic. O- organic. <laughs> So I would actually say we, almost, we abuse each other. <laughs> do you do the vegan cakes? Gl- gluten free. Uh, I would say most of the almost all the ingredients I use are actually organic. Um, like I'll usually try to get the most fresh and organic things I can find. Um, if a customer definitely says I need it hundred percent organic. So I make sure I I'm, you know, more aware of that. Um, but I would say 90% of what I use is already organic to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I have, I have recently more started to do like vegan wedding cakes and uh, gluten-free options. I'm getting more comfortable with them because the, you know, the stability of these, you know, the structure, structurally, the cakes are a little different when it's like gluten-free and when you're making it with different substances like almond flour, sometimes more crumbly. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more of a struggle to make like five tiers with almond flour. Um, cause you need it to be strong. So, um, I am more recently getting, you know, more comfortable with it because obviously it's become a big hit. You know, I've even started doing like keto cakes and stuff because that's a huge hit now. Oh my god! Um, so oh my god! I have to go with, you know, go with what the people want, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like in, for regular flour, like you're making, you know, your your whiskey cake. Is there a particular brand of flour that you swear by that you just you know it well? It works well for you. Um, personally, I love like King Arthur's. Um, mm-hmm. But I am I I am open to testing, especially you know during everything when it was so hard to find flour out there. Um, you know, you'd go on the baking shelves and everything was empty. You know, a couple months ago, um, so it was a little harder to find. But that's usually what I use. I'm but I am open to other things. But I have to like know it, like you know the gold medal. Obviously, I'll know. But I always try to get the like the King Arthur's organic. That's usually what I like. So it's not like a particular pastry flour. It's it's you know, all purpose flour is depends is the on the recipe. So certain cake, like that cake, I don't need a pastry flour for, but the, there are certain recipes that I do need, uh, because the pastry flour is a lot like finer. So depending on what cake I'm making, I would actually need that. Uh, in, but most of the time I have been able to kind of work my recipes to just be able to use all purpose. Gotcha. Uh, you know, when, when people call you, are they, are they usually local to where you are? D- yes. D- do you ever travel? Yes. I mean, because I would imagine, uh, well, I, I guess the question is, what's the furthest you've traveled to deliver a cake? I'm just curious. Um, so 
It depends. I have like, you know, so I'm located in Bogota, like that area. And um, I mean, I've gone delivered cakes to um, like <laughs> Totowa before I've done Hoboken before. Like I said, I do the city. Um, so when it's like within the 10 miles of, of, of where I am, I do usually include the delivery, but anytime it goes a lot further when I'm driving like over half an hour to deliver a cake, I will usually include a delivery fee. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I, I will go far. Like I said, as soon, unless, you know, especially with weddings, cause a lot of times the venues are a little further and I mean, who wants to come pick it up the day of the wedding, right? You know, what yeah. bride has the time for that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, usually it has to be a delivery, but a lot of times the venues are a little further away. So I said, I'll deliver. I have no problem. But you know, obviously you, at, you know, you, there is a fee with that. So mm-hmm. gotcha. yeah. How far in advance do you meet with your clients and, and do they, you know, do they book you and do you fill up, do you take one client a day? That um, it depend, depends on the order. Um, it would be hard to take like multiple wedding cakes a day, but it really depends on the size of the order. So I have done, um, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes some weekends there's, you know, there's obviously like a, a larger amount of orders then I have to like call in some help and, and I get like my interns to kind of help me. Um, but for the most part, it's just me. So I, I do try to like book my, you know, order, I mean, book my calendar pretty organized, but it's, it's a little hard. Sometimes, sometimes people will reach out and be like, Oh, I have a last minute party. It's in two weeks. Would you be willing? And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'll look at my calendar. Like if, even if I have another order, if I can fit them in, I will absolutely say yes. But for the most part, especially with the wedding cake, I do like to ask them for like two months in advance, just so I can put it in my calendar. And I know like, but like I said, like if they reach out to me a couple of weeks prior and if I have the availability, availability, I will say yes. Um, mm-hmm. cause sometimes things come up and you know, it's hard. One time somebody reached out like five days before, uh, their daughter sweet 16. And it was a pretty big party. It was like 150 people and they, uh, you know, their pastry chef got sick, I guess. And they, they canceled, you know, they weren't able to make the order. So she reached out to me and I was able to, you know, to make something work. And I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. Like I felt bad. I'm like, what the girl's going to end up without a cake. Like, of yeah. course, sure. Yeah. Let's do it. You know? Um, so I'm Very flexible, sweet. but I, you know, it's always good to have that, that notice in advance. So that way I can plan my calendar, I can get the right ingredients and all that, that stuff. Yeah, sure. No, mm-hmm. d- do like, do couples need to worry about anything outside of booking you? Like, do they have to worry about where it's going in the space, serving utensils, anything like that? Or is that all provided by the, cu- is that provided by the couple and the venue or are you, is that part of your service? So the serving utensils, usually couples get themselves because a lot mm-hmm. of times they like like the memorable. It's like a gift people give. Exactly. Um, they have it on their registry most of the time. I mean, if they had, if they asked, I'll provide it. I, I have no problem with that. The display, um, again, it depends on the couple because certain couples have ex- like an image. They have all the things, you know, there's some brides that have everything from A to Z planned and, you know, they're like, you just bring this and I'll take care of everything everything else. Um, and then there's some brides that are like, yeah, you know, you make it work, you make it look pretty. So they, you know, when they, you know, they'll trust me a little bit more. So I'll put it on a stand or I'll, you know, display the little table, you know, whatever the case is, add some flowers around it. Um, but every wedding is, I would say, you know, unique in, in that sense. But uh, again, I'm always willing to work with the couple if they want something. And if they're like, I don't want to worry about it, you handle it, then I absolutely will. And, and I'll talk to them and give them options. This is what I'm going to do. What do you think? Obviously, so they don't show up and they're like, what is that? <laughs> Why is this so simple? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just curious, like, have you ever had a cake damaged in transit? <laughs> I actually haven't. Oh, my gosh. It's the grace of God that I haven't. And, um, I mean, it's funny story. I'll never forget before I even really started my business. Um, it was before I had even finished, you know, uh, like college, like school, um, somebody came to me and ordered like this four tier first birthday party cake actually. And I was like, oh my gosh, that that was Jeannie's family. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, the the the, the, uh, the christening. <laughs> the oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, it was like a four tier princess birthday really cake, big. and yeah, and Not I four was tiers, like, but it was big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like so crazy, and and I hadn't really had all this stuff, you know, the experience or anything prepared. I wasn't even expecting anything, and when she asked me to make it, I I said yeah, sure, and I didn't really think that I had to drive it like forty five minutes away. And so, I mean, I had my little sister in the car with me and she's like holding this big cake and I'm like, don't you dare drop it. Like, <laughs> It was an experience for sure. Like of every pothole, I was just like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But nothing happened. We got there safely. So thank God there was no, no issues. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is the craziest cake you've ever made in terms of um, aesthetics? Um... So I try to actually, it's funny, it's not even for a customer, but um, every year for my husband's birthday, I always ah. try to like do something mm -hmm. a little like crazy. So uh, he's a big car guy. Um, so the first year we were even dating, um, I made hit like his car. I like did like a oh, cool. cobalt blue, uh, Subaru w WRX with like all the stars and the symbols. Cute. Um, and then the year after I did like an electric, uh, guitar cake and stuff. So, you know, cause most of my clients always order like classy and yeah. elegant, nice things. So I always try to like go, go crazy. Nuts. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, like a super Mario cake, kind of like have Cute. fun, you know, and, yeah. and do practice for like little kid cakes, you know? So yeah. it's usually his Great. cakes that I practice with. <laughs> <laughs> and like anything other than cake, like do you do any type of pastries for weddings or any other event where people are like, bring cookies, bring. Yes. So actually I basically any, um, I mean, I'm always open to suggestions or requests for the, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, the past couple of years, I, you know, I didn't even expect this to happen, but what has been a really big hit is my Nutella nut braid. Oh my God. And what? Uh, what yeah, I that? offer it. Talk to us about this. Yes. Okay. So it's like, uh, it's like this croissant dough that I make, not like totally croissant dough. It's a little bit more, it's not as flaky as that. And, uh, and I do this like uh, cinnamon and sugar with Nutella and like almonds, um, like this filling. And then I braid it and it's like this beautiful decorative piece. And I and it started like three years ago around Thanksgiving and it was like a big hit. And every year more people were ordering it right you know, around Thanksgiving. And now I have clients that order it all year round. Anytime they have a party, they're like, oh, can I have one? So I have it in all like different sizes. Um, it started when I was doing it for Thanksgiving, like a small round and a large round. And I'll decorate it with like pumpkins and this and that and cranberries. And then some people wanted it for like events, like bridal showers and stuff. And so they're like, but we want it for like our pretty table. So we don't really want it like a wreath. We, you know, we don't want them like cutting pieces into it. So then I started making like mini bite sized ones for them. Oh my God. Um, that's a huge hit. That's like, you know, a big one. Um, wow. I'm like note to self. That's my, <laughs> my husband's your, like your favorite hu thing. Does your husband ask you to like just randomly make stuff? He does, um, but do you get usually, annoyed? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like always say no. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, no, like go on, like you know, if I have the time, I will. But yeah, I don't have the time. <laughs> oh my, my, I feel like your house would smell amazing. Um, yes, for the most part, oh you know, goodness, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> lately I've been working on like some focaccia recipes. Like mm. I'm like trying Ooh. to do some breads and stuff, venture out a little differently. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always something, it smells like something different. Yeah. Always. Well, listen, you're set up for a podcast, so start it. We'll be your first listener. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. We want to learn. I know. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I actually, during this whole quarantine, I started doing like these little intro uh, or like how to videos. So like whatever recipes I was kind of working on, oh. I'd like do the videos on mm -hmm. my Instagram so people can like kind of like uh, learn it and then they'll tag me in it when they're making it. So kind of like interactive oh, and fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Since like a lot of the orders got canceled, obviously, as events got order, uh, you know, got canceled. Um, that's kind of, it was a fun way to kind of connect with my clients still. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite? Is it, is it the Nutella braid? Cause that sounds like my favorite. <laughs> Uh, it, I would say yes, because I'm a big Nutella fan and I try not to make it like too sweet because the dough is not sweet. So it kind of gives it this like perfect balance. Mm -hmm. I, I could definitely eat a lot of that. <laughs> That's a dangerous one. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anything that you want to tell couples like getting ready, you know, they're planning their wedding, um, you know, in terms of now it's time for the cake. <laughs> what <laughs> anything they should know? Um, 
I would say, I mean, not even just with the cake, but just in general, um, always connect, like always work with vendors that you connect with because, I mean, I knew myself when I was planning a wedding, like, you know, you reach out to a bunch of, you know, vendors and some people respond, some people do, you know, don't, and some people act like, you know, we need them. And it, like, as a bride, you're like, wait a second, you know, I'm reaching out to you. I can go to like 10 other people, you know, and, and you, it's such a special day for the couple that you want to make sure that they're honored to be part of it. So that connection mm -hmm. is so important because then that, you know, then you'll lead to, um, you know, kind of trusting that everything is going to fall into place. You know, when you're not sure of the vendor, then you get a little more concerned, oh, are they going to take care of this? Are they going to take care of that? And, you know, I know for myself with my business, you know, my key is that like, I want to be able to connect with the customer and build that relationship with them because a wedding is, you know, hopefully a one-time thing, but then you want to be able to bake their, you know, the baby shower mm -hmm. cake, a gender reveal cake, a first birthday cake. You want to keep that customer for life. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have so many customers that started with me when I first started and now it's, so it's like eight years later Aww. and I've done like all their kids' birthdays and I've done it's like, so nice. it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Very it's special. So, yeah. It is very special. So very it's meaningful. really cool. It is definitely. And like, I think vendors should feel that too. Like it's not just another business deal. It's like, you know, they're inviting you to be part of their day. And I think that like, if more vendors thought of that, then they'll try extra hard to make sure mm -hmm. that like, they take care of everything. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. yeah, definite connection. And I never even thought about that because I did the same thing with our son and his birthday. I went to the same place every year, mm -hmm. place that we love for his cakes. Wow. And now we don't have one. So this is, well. this is where I'm going <laughs> to ask you to, to plug yourself. How can people find you? Instagram, yeah. Facebook. Um, so, where can we find those cute little videos you said? So if you go on Instagram, my Instagram name is very simple. Pastries by Lara. No spaces, no nothing. It's pastries by L-A-R-A, -A, Lara, because sometimes people get confused how to spell it. Um, Facebook is the same thing. Um, I do, I, I will say, I mean, I post everything that I do on Instagram on Facebook, but um, I mean, obviously I do more stories and stuff on Instagram. So if you want like always to reach out, that's, I would say like the first way, um, like I said, you can reach out on the knot and stuff as well, but, um, I mean, however they're comfortable, but I would say like always Instagram, you know, go to, and I always f put fun bakes and photos and, you know, try my best to just kind of, you know, keep people interactive. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, yeah. Instagram pastries by Lara, go click follow and hopefully you guys like what you see. Perfect. Great. And is there a business email you want to share? It's also pastries by Lara at gmail.com. Okay. okay. Easy yes. to remember. Awesome. Yeah. Easy to remember. It's on the Instagram page as well. Um, and you know, if you need, you know, if you DM me, then, then I could obviously, you know, share the number. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And that if it's easier to connect through phone call, you know, some, some clients tend to like to speak on the phone. So that's totally fine. Or me in person. I have no problem with that as well, but you know, it's always good to kind of connect via internet always first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Any you. Other questions? Uh, no, no. I'm yeah, good. I picked yes. your brain. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. This is really, really good. Thank you guys so much Thank for having you. me. This is great. And again, please be sure to follow uh, Laura Pastries by Lara on Facebook and Instagram. Like mm -hmm. she mentioned, you can email her pastriesbylara at gmail.com. Um, and also please subscribe to us on Apple Podcast. It, it really does help. <laughs> And our website, podcast.livepicturestudios.com. And follow us on Facebook, Facebook and Instagram at Live Picture Studios. You just made a new thing, Facegram. Love it. Facegram. <laughs> uh, email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything else that you guys want to share. Uh, we are open. We did get an email somebody <laughs> wants to do. We, we've got a few, but one of them was... Uh, somebody that wants to come on uh, one of our episodes and do like boudoir wedding shoots. And we have had, <laughs> <laughs> we've had some spice it up with, mm -hmm. with, with some of our brides going, do any of your photographers do that? And they really just don't have the time for it because they're so booked, but uh, it would be cool to have somebody on and, and discuss that. So please send yeah. us your ideas and uh, comments. 
And this episode is powered by K Vibe Go Live. And produced by Kwali, Natalia Delgado, Marcia Rosa, Mark Falcon, and our editor, Nicole Palmetti. Music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. All right, Thanks. until next time. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Happy planning. <laughs> Go eat a cake. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Bye, guys.